Hi everyone and welcome back to ZDNet's DIY IT Discovery Series on 3D Printing. My name is David Gewertz and we've got some new stuff going on today. So one of the things that you folks have been asking me about a lot is different kinds of 3D printers and I've had the pleasure and the fortune of being able to work with the MakerBot folks with their MakerBot Replicator 5th generation to get to know 3D printing. And they've been extremely helpful in doing this process. But there are many, many other printers. And one example is this Lulzbot Mini. Now Lulzbot has a, has a really good reputation for great printers. And so they were kind enough to provide me with a Lulzbot Mini to take a look at. These two printers are rather different. Now over time, we'll go into a lot of the details about how they're different. But today I want to start with some of the very basics to just give you a, a feel for it. First off, the Replicator um, is about twice the price of the Lulzbot Mini. This is a lower end priced printer. Uh, and one of the most obvious differences is that this blue tape area is the size of the printing bed over here. And as you can see, I'm going to sneak it in over here just from underneath. You can see that the printing area for the, um, the MakerBot is considerably different, both in terms of height as well as in terms of width and depth. So essentially, the MakerBot's a bigger printer. The MakerBot has a couple of other very interesting differences from the Lulzbot, but the Lulzbot has some advantages over the MakerBot. What the MakerBot has is it has a camera, so I can check its printing status from anywhere. And I've written about this before. I've been in Home Depot and had an eight-hour print, been able to look at it. I can upload my print to the printer over Ethernet. I have an Ethernet cable going into the back here, um, right into the back. And so I don't have to have a dedicated computer. You may have noticed that there's a little computer over here. This is Della. This is my wife's old little purple Dell, Met, uh, excuse me, Dell netbook. And I needed to come up with a printer that I could dedicate through the entire printing process to the printer. So if the print is two hours or if the, printer is, the print is 20 hours, this computer needs to be connected because the computer itself is driving the XYZ motions of the printer. Whereas inside of the MakerBot, the MakerBot itself has instructions on how to do that. So in fact, I've had this for about a week and it's taken me a little while to come up with a computer that I could dedicate to this process because I didn't want to take my MacBook Pro and bring it in here and just leave it here for hours. So I've got this thing in here and I'll probably look at adding a Raspberry Pi to the, the Lulzbot as a separate project so that I can free up my wife's old computer. Um, but there are some real advantages to the Lulzbot as well. The Lulzbot down here, now this is, it's not hot right now, but this bed, which you can kind of see down here, the brown area, is a heated bed where the MakerBot's bed is not heated. Now a heated bed allows you to do an awful lot of different kinds of filaments, which is why I have a stack of filaments over here. Um, the bed can heat up, which helps the, the different kinds of filaments adhere to the plate. And so you can do things like ABS and other things that you just couldn't do with a non-heated uh, filament type. The extruder is also very different. This extruder just snaps in and you drop it in. You can see the gears right here. You can see all the operation of it. So you can sort of get into it where that has a smart extruder, which, it, which has some benefits. It'll tell you, for example, when it's out of filament, things like that, but it's also much more complex to work with. Um, another interesting thing about this is that the print bed itself moves back and forth this way on the Lulzbot, where on the MakerBot, the print bed goes up and down. So that means that the axis here goes left and right and up and down. The, the actual printing mechanism, where the printing mechanism on the MakerBot always stays on the same plane, and it's the bed that goes up and down. But it's the filament differences that are really interesting, and it's where we're going to spend quite a bit of time looking at uh, the Lulzbot in comparison to the MakerBot. Now, I'm not going to tell you that one is a better printer than the other, because they're clearly not. They clearly serve different purposes, and this is what's, what's been very, very interesting as I've conducted my discovery process in 3D printing, is I've learned that there are a huge number of different printers. There are printers ranging from 200 bucks all the way up to hundreds of thousands of dollars. And there are different mechanisms. There's um, the additive process. There's a process where lasers hit stuff and activate the, the medium. There's so many different processes for printers. And there's many, many different printers that just use filament. One of the interesting things, I'll show you when I do a print later, is that the filament size, 
and you won't really be able to see this from here, but the actual filament size, this filament is for the low spot, which is about three um, millimeters across, and this is about 1.75 for the MakerBot. It's a smaller size filament, even though they extrude the same amount, so it's pushing more through the head. Um, there's a wide variety of colors that I've been able to work with on the MakerBot. I've actually had these four. I've got black, white, blue, gray, and orange that I've worked with on the MakerBot, but they're all the same material. They're all ABS, and that's because the MakerBot is an all ABS printer. That's a great advantage in one sense because ABS is a very, very benign and reliable plastic. It's a disadvantage if you want to do all sorts of funky printing. So the MakerBot, excuse me, in this case, the LulzBot folks, were nice enough to provide me with a pile of different filaments to test out and work with. So what I've got here, this is nylon. Uh, nylon is gonna be very, very industrial strength. It's gonna be great for gears, things like that. Now, I will tell you ahead of time that I am not an expert on these filaments yet. So one of the things that we'll be doing in our discovery series is looking at these different filaments and finding out what you can do with it. This is a green filament which is PCTPE, and it's the same color as all the gears and stuff on the lull spot. This here, hopefully it won't fall. This is ABS. This is the same stuff that um, they make Legos out of, and it's a big pile of black ABS. This is pretty much, if you've seen stuff made out of plastic, the most common consumer product, including probably the mouse over here, is ABS. This is a piece of, no, this isn't it. Um, this is a piece of very inexpensive PLA. This is gold, and it's roughly half the price of some of the other stuff because I bought a discount version. This one I actually bought because of all the, the, the materials I was provided, I wasn't provided with the old school PLA and I wanted to get to know that as well. So this was about half the price because it's just a knockoff brand and it'll give us an opportunity to see how that works. The MakerBot folks are very clear that you should not use anything but their branded filament. This is copolyester filament in green. And I'm not opening these boxes, by the way, because some of these filaments are moisture sensi sensitive. And so until I know exactly how I'm gonna care for them, I'm keeping them in their distribution boxes. This is color fab. This is color fab wood. So we're gonna print something that's gonna look like wood some point in this process. I might even finish it. I'm gonna, huh, depending on how complex my wife decides to get, I'm gonna ask her if she wants to pick something off of Thingiverse and I'll print something in wood for her. And then this is uh, red polymer filament, also from Color Fab. And so we've got a red polymer co-polyester filament. So all of these different filaments are producible on this one little printer and we're going to see a lot about what that means. I'm putting all these back up here. Another interesting thing, MakerBot got its start in the open source community, but has moved on to sort of a proprietary uh, setup, which serves them very well in the sense that this is a really, really nice printer. Um, but the LulzBot folks have all of their plans online and is completely open source. In fact, you can see, I'm going to stick my hand in here, you can see these parts here, and these parts here and this unit in here that holds the filament in and some of this stuff, a lot of this is all 3D printed. So it's got a steel frame, very similar to the steel frame that the MakerBot has, but it's got a lot of these 3D printed parts that are built into here as well. So what that means is in theory, you can upgrade this stuff. One of the things that I know you can do is you can replace this nozzle set with a different kind of nozzle. They have a flexible nozzle for printing flexible filament. So you can actually pull this nozzle off and replace it. But in theory, you could print out new parts. So if this carriage piece breaks or this thing gets you know used up over time, you can print a new one. So that's really interesting. So that's my overview of these things. I have a small piece of sample filament in here and we're gonna do a quick sample print using Cura. Cura is a slicing program. Remember that slicing programs are the thing that takes the model in 3D and turns it into layers so that you can then be able to use it in some way in a 3D printer. It knows how to lay down each layer one after the other. So where with the MakerBot, I use the MakerBot desktop to produce the 3D prints in, um, on the LulzBot, I'm gonna use Cura. 
and that's a much more common um, slicing program and it has a lot of interesting features. There are other slicing programs that can also work and I may look at those over time, but first I'm going to get to know Cura on this device and we'll see how it does. So with that I'm going to go, I'm going to start up a print which is just basically hitting the print button on here. Uh, let it get started. I'll go handheld, take a couple pieces of video of the printout, and then we will talk in a few minutes. Actually, probably we'll talk in about an hour or so after it's done printing. And there we go, it is done printing. Um, the quality looks really good. The tray right now is back here because it still hasn't cooled down. Uh, it's very, very hot. Um, so once the tray cools down, it'll shoot forward and then I'll look at removing the actual um, print from the bed. But I can even hold my hand over it and feel the heat, it's, it's very hot. Interestingly, the little piece of test filament, I don't know if you can tell, but <laughs> they, they measured their filament just right for this test print because there is just a teeny little bit left. Um, but I'm really impressed. I'm looking at the quality, the finger, the, the two little fingers that um, are sticking up on, on the Roctopus is what I think they call it. Um, that's, that's quite a lot of detail and that's really well done. So I'm gonna probably have to uh, uh, reprint my Dalek and see how it comes out in uh, the PLA here and maybe an ABS and see how that works out. We'll find out some of those things. But there you go. There's uh, a new printer. Um, I will be doing more and more with both of these printers uh, and we'll be learning more and more about 3D printing in the ZDNet DIYIT Discovery Series on 3D printing. And if you want to follow along and be updated regularly, do not hesitate to push the little subscribe button that's right down over there. Uh, and subscribe and then you'll get regular updates to this as well as the broadband studio project that I'm also working on concurrently. Thanks a lot for ZDNet and DIY IT and also big thanks to the MakerBot, to the MakerBot <laughs> and LulzBot folks. The, um, I want to thank them for providing us with, uh, with the printer. The actual company name for the Lulzbot is, oh, that's hot. I put my hand near it. It's quite toasty. The actual company name for, for the Lulzbot is not Lulzbot. It's actually Aleph Objects, A-L-E-P-H, Objects. So a big thanks to the people over at Aleph Object. <laughs> a big thanks to the people at Aleph Objects and to the nice folks at MakerBot who I've gotten to know over the past bunch of months. 
uh, and to all of you for giving me topics and questions and keeping me up to speed on what you'd like to know that's helping guide my discovery of 3D printing and all of ours together. Have yourself a great day. Go print something cool and push the subscribe button. It'll make everybody happy.